Hello everyone, artist Charles Wolf here, back again for another painting video. We're going to start out today by making some grey mix. This mix is created with titanium white, ultramarine blue, and a touch of the Mars black. A touch of that black as it's very strong, and only a little bit will do. I've been using this grey mixture on several of my paintings lately, and I'm really loving it. This sort of grey scale approach, a little bit more muted for my palette. And today we're going to create a lovely sunrise over a pond. This painting is painted from a photograph. Now this pond is extra special to me. And this pond is actually on my parents' property in Texas. They recently moved there and I went this summer to visit them. My father has always taken me fishing. On my trip, he and my brother, we got up early one morning and went out to the little pond on the property and caught some bluegills and it was a lot of fun. While I was fishing, I had my camera on me and I took a few snapshot photos of the rising sun over the little pond and it was just magnificently beautiful with the silhouetted trees and the grassy bank on the far side as we had a good time fishing that morning. I'm adding more white as I go here, blending these colors together. You can see I'm using a flat wash brush, a nice moppy brush that allows me to cover a good deal of the space on this canvas. Today I'm working on a 12 by 12 inch canvas. Lovely square size, I'm very partial to these. I think they look very elegant, and having a square rather than a rectangle is rather beautiful I think. You can see I have a nice grayed out tone there. I'm gonna add a little more blue to the top right corner as we go along. A little more blue here. Today I'm using the ultramarine blue, a little bit deeper of a blue than cobalt blue. Darker blue, a little bit richer. The cobalt blue blends better with your greens, but the ultramarine blue looks a little bit better for the sky. I could probably do both, but I try to keep my palettes as limited as possible. More color mixing, which is probably more useful to you if you are a beginning artist. Touch more white here. Closer and closer to the bottom of this horizon, we want more of the white. You can see that I'm leaving my brushwork very visible and very active. We don't want to overmix here, we don't want to blend all that away. We want to keep the brushwork very, very present and forward. Don't blend it all together. The temptation always is to overmix things, overblend things. We want to keep it relaxed, and we want to keep all that beautiful brushwork very exposed and visible. If you stand back a good deal, your eyes will blend all that together, and it will look really atmospheric and just lovely. Don't get rid of all those beautiful brush marks. Keep them. In fact, really, really push them forward. Okay, next we'll have some coral mix. And we're going to mix together some cadmium yellow medium, some naphthol crimson, and some titanium white. And that's the yellow, the red to make orange, and then the white is to lighten the whole thing up. Here comes the white now. Blend this together, maybe a touch more of the red there. to get the color to be looking about what I want it to be. The sun was rising and it was just absolutely beautiful. Lovely oranges shooting up into that bluish gray mix. Key part of this is getting the color to be accurate. Taking a closer look here. Okay. Trying to decide where exactly I should start this horizon. And we're going to go for about right there, I think. Okay, you can see how intense that red and that orange is. And that's okay. As we move outwards, we're going to add a little more white. Here, I'm just pulling straight down. A little more yellow, a little more white.
pulling downwards. We're going to blend up into and layer over the gray. We don't want the two colors mixing together too much. If it starts turning green on you, then your blue is still too wet. Might be a good idea to pause, even dry off your blue before you apply the orange. I'm just quickly scrubbing this in. And you'll notice that where I'm applying most of the orange on the right hand portion where there was more white, less possibility of the two colors mixing. The yellow and the blue can form a bit of a green, although the red is going to help prevent that and it'll become more of a brown actually. If you mix all three of your primary colors together, you'll actually get brown. Blue, yellow, and red make brown. But because I'm applying it on a partially dry layer and acrylic paint dries so very quickly, we get away with this layering technique. Again, I'm keeping the brushwork very visible, very active. So right here in the center, we're going to have our large trees. Before that, i got to fix this corner. And then below, we're going to have the pond and have some wonderful reflections of that luminous sky. And of course, of the trees. As the shadows are being cast onto the water, if the light source is behind the trees, then the shadow is going to be cast back towards you. Just fixing a few spots here at the top. When you're painting, don't forget to paint the sides of your canvas. Very important. Looks more professional and you don't have to frame it that way. You can just hang it up and it looks really nice. Okay, back to my coral mixture. Fill in this corner here, flatten this out, make this more straight. All right, let's start to make our dark olive mix. We're gonna take a bit of the blue, some of the yellow, make a dark green, and add some black to that. It's a very, very dark, intense color. It's a very deep olive green. Touch more of the blue. Good deal more of the yellow. Don't wanna to go too much with the yellow, but enough that it does read green. We don't want this to be like midnight black. We do want some color there. But it's a very, very dark color. I'm gonna go back to my other brush for a second. I have two brushes going on right now, and here is the coral mix. I've added a little more red to this. I need to just finish the right hand side of that sky there. I forgot to go all, all the way across. We're gonna fix that real fast. Back to that dark olive mix in a second. There we go, that's better. Just scrub this in. Nice. Okay, here's the dark olive mix. Using the corner of my flat wash brush, we're going to start by just dabbing this tree line into the layer of the coral. A bit more of the mixture. This is a very dark color, it's almost black, but there is enough yellow and in person you can see more of the green coming through. One of the things about paintings is that sometimes the colors are easier to see when you're right up against it. Large tree over here. Touch more of the black and a little more of the blue into the mixture. And we'll start to fill in this very large tree. A little more yellow here. You can see the green starting to emerge a bit more. 
allowing the bristles to splay and bend and create some wonderful textures. One thing I would definitely recommend is leave some of that orange showing through the branches, through the leaves there. You have that lovely coral color behind and some of it will show through the leaves. Don't go covering it all up. At the bottom, it should be quite dark because there is the grass and then the water edge. It should be dark, but we do want to have just some flecks of the coral shooting through those leaves. And down here, we're going to cover this up. If you want to be a little more efficient, you could mirror the sky down below first before going onto the trees and do the trees afterwards. For me though, I decided to just jump right into these trees. I'm going to come back right now with some coral, sort of establish where the waterline is exactly going to be. Start to put in this coral here, right up against that tree. I have some of it covering up over into the actual leaves there. white and after mopping this across we're going to start to put back in the textures with the active brushwork notice that I'm not painting a lot of detail here I'm not spending time with very small brushes and putting in lots of little marks I'm using a fairly wide brush using very active brushwork and with some patience and with some precision you can create some lovely impressions of these pieces. This is an impression. This is not supposed to be a very detailed painting. A lot of the detail will emerge as the form and the colors are correct. You'll notice that I'm not drawing in little water lines or anything like that, blocking in the basic colors and the basic shape. Already, this is starting to read correctly. You can see the depth and the perspective. You can see the reflections are going to look really nice into that water. The trees are nicely silhouetted and the sky looks great. Touch more of the crimson, the yellow and the white. Mix together the coral mix. Coral comes higher on the right hand side of the canvas and I want to mirror that down below. I've brought the coral around the front of this reflection on the left and I'm going to have to cover that up with some more blue to make it match the sky above. More of this coral will be covered up as we put in some more trees and a little bit of a bank on the right hand side. This is looking more like a lake than a pond, so we need to make sure that we fix that by making the trees a little closer, by making them bigger. Bringing in my light blue-gray mixture here. Touch of the black, mostly blue and white. We're going to cover up the coral here on the left. That Got a little high. Bit of the white will help with the opacity. If you ever need to cover something up, put a layer of the white down first and then put your color over that and it will quickly enable you to get around the colors blending too quickly. I do suggest having the bottom layer be dry though. This will just make a lighter version of whatever colors you're doing if you put the white on wet paint. Okay, a little more white here, blending here, getting lighter as it's starting to mix, and I'm just playing that blue 
sort of like it is above, into the coral. Does it need to follow the basic outline of the shape, kind of lower down on the left and coming higher up on the right? Yes, mirror it. Again, the, the brushwork does a lot of the work for you. And as long as you're being accurate with your shapes and you're accurate with your colors, you don't need a lot of the detail. A lot of that can be filled in by the viewer's imagination. Speaking as an impressionist, which I am. Occasionally, like recently, I did a very large landscape, uh, Santa Magdalena. Do you check out the time lapse of that? That was a very big project. 20 hours of painting on one painting, which for me is a long time. Still impressionistic, but there was more time to put in little details and to make sure absolutely everything was accurate and following a photograph of course meant that I could achieve that level. For these demonstrations though I want to keep them relatively short and straightforward. Having a looser more of an impressionistic approach complements that desire because who wants to watch three or four hours of painting? I certainly don't have time for that. I know you all don't either. Keeping things simple, straightforward, and quick is the way to go. And even with a simple painting like this, you can learn a lot. Color mixing, about blending, about keeping the brushwork active, layering, light versus dark, Back to my dark olive mix. A little more yellow, a little blue, and the black. A little darker now. Let's make these right hand trees taller. These are more even across. It looks like they are curving away from us because of the way I painted them in. They do get smaller on the left hand side over here but not that much smaller so these need to be a little more straight across so that they reflect the photograph more accurately. All the way across here. And let's make this tree also maybe just a little taller. I'll reflect this down into the water. This is not a very big pond, so adding in this bank here is going to help out a lot. Pulling straight downward with the brush. I'm going to connect the two sides here. With a darker mixture, you can already see where the layers are happening. This comes straight across over here, slight angle. Again, the trees on the right are still a little too short. We're gonna fix that very quickly. And we'll start to reflect this down into the water. Bit more of the dark olive mixture. Very dark here, pulling downwards. Using the corner of my brush, I'll start to make these a bit taller. As things get closer to you, they're going to get bigger, and these are larger trees. And by making them larger, everything feels a lot closer. 
and the perspective and the size of the pond starts to come into focus to a greater degree. Come a little lower on this side. Really gonna exaggerate these beautiful reflections. And actually in the photograph they are rather elongated. It's very early morning so the shadows are quite long. Okay, a little bigger here. And you can see that I'm almost dry brushing it. Very little paint on that brush. And that creates a nice soft mistiness to the tops of these. Light is really poking through. And we'll start to reflect these down into the water. If you go too far, or the shape doesn't look right, or something's not quite reading, you can either adjust the trees above to match what you reflect, or you can simply go back over with some more coral and cover up any mistakes. Paint is so very forgiving. Don't be intimidated by it, especially acrylic paint. You can just layer more paint over it, dry it off with a hair dryer, and start again. It's very forgiving. Take all the time you need. I'm going very quickly because I'm trying to demonstrate something in a relatively uh, quick fashion. If you were painting this in your own time, you could take as long as you want to paint each part. I'll often let something sit for a couple days and come back to it and make some small adjustments. Often after having fresh eyes and looking at each part, I can see the little inconsistencies, the little mistakes, and make some adjustments to them. Here I'm bringing in some of the lighter coral right across the bottom edge of this bank. There were some lovely marshy things happening over there and the light is hitting them. And I'm going to bring that up on the left hand side as well onto the bank. Just using that nice coral mixture, it's hitting the blues and the yellow and the blue is creating a nice soft green color. Back to my dark olive mix. I'm gonna tap away here, darken this up. Bringing in the black on this side here. Very little paint on that brush. Okay, need some more paint. Get running out of paint. So, more yellow, more black, more blue. More black. There we go. If your paint gets a little dry, you can add a little water to it. I don't do that very often, but I know a lot of artists will be wetting down their canvas as they're working on acrylics and stuff like that. I rarely ever do that. I don't, I don't know why I don't do that. I probably could do it more. I have a little cup of water down by my feet that I can dip my brushes into if I need to make them more wet. I'm used to oil paint, which is a lot thicker. Bring this forward a little more. This tree here is a little larger and it comes right down to the water's edge. We want to reflect that. Got to change the shape here, make it match. I'm 
we're going to adjust the shape here. Okay, back to my coral mix. We don't want a lot of paint on our brush. We're going to wipe off some of the excess there. I'm going to dry brush in some of the coral back across these reflections here. More of the coral is showing through. We're going to tap this in. Take a paper towel and just dab off the excess. Don't forget the size of your canvas, of course, as well. A little more dark right down here. Back to my dark olive green. mix together some lighter olive mix, cadmium yellow, more of it, Mars black, and just a touch of the white and the ultramarine blue, mostly yellow and black. We want a nice olive green, but not as dark as the as the underlayer. And we're going to just brush in quickly just a hint of a lighter green bank on the far side. And some over here as well. And I'll take some of the lighter yellows and just toss in a few very light highlights on the top corners of this tree on the left hand side and on the trees on the right. like it's getting too intense just grab some more of the mars black and cover it up and that's a finished painting thank you so much for watching check out my etsy shop etsy.com slash shop slash impulsive artistry where you can support me by buying a painting and i hope that you have a great day please subscribe